Hey, it's Tom here and welcome back to the channel. Now, there is some pretty scary stuff going on in the world at the moment and uh, my heart goes out to anyone affected by the things that are going on in Ukraine. And uh, from that particular situation, there are really a lot of flow on effects to the investment world. And that's kind of what I wanna cover in this particular video. And more specifically, I want to talk about commodity companies. Uh, one of the flow on effects that we're starting to see is some all time high prices in a number of commodities. And it's kind of come at a time where in many particular commodities we were already approaching or perhaps even at all time highs. And this has really been kind of fuel on the fire to push some of these prices even higher. As of recording this video, uh, oil is about 118 US dollars per barrel. That compares to about $60 a year ago and you know, it even went negative not all that long ago in the grand scheme of things really. Uh, we've also got uh, steel prices at all-time highs, we've got wheat prices at all-time highs, we've got gold getting very close to all-time highs and the list kind of goes on and on and on with really abnormally high commodity prices. So in this video I really want to cover a couple of different topics. Firstly I want to talk about some general investment principles when it comes to buying into commodity companies because a lot of people I think are getting really tempted to buy into these companies uh, right now because the companies are more or less just printing money in, in a lot of these different industries. And uh, I also want to cover some of the key things that I would look for when analyzing one of these companies. Now, I have made a couple of commodity investments in the past, not a huge number, but I've made a couple. One of them worked out modestly successful, I would say. It wasn't a home run by any means, but I made some money on it. And uh, the other one was one that I made, which uh, really had a lot of things actually go wrong in the underlying business. Uh, some things that I thought might happen didn't exactly play out, but I made that investment with sufficient margin of safety to where I really didn't experience permanent loss of capital, which uh, that's rule number one of investing and uh, all things considered, you know, looking at the things that kind of happen in that underlying business to be able to get out of that without really losing any money, I think is a pretty good outcome overall. And there are a lot of really well-known investors that have made a good amount of money in commodities over time. Monish Prabhai is really the main one that springs to mind. He has uh, made a lot of money in commodities by making a basket bet in the financial crisis. He also uh, made about a 3x on a company called Ipsco in the early 2000s, and I'm sure the list is much longer than that, but those are at least the ones that he has spoken about, and he said that he feels pretty comfortable in commodities for the most part, although he has had a bit of a switch in investment strategy in the last couple of years. So that is the topic of today's video, but before we get into that, we do have a sponsor, and the sponsor for today's video is ShareSite. Now ShareSite is the application that I personally use for really two different purposes. The first thing is it allows me to track my returns in a lot of detail. For uh, me here in New Zealand and making a lot of investments outside of New Zealand, uh, I have some extra things that I need to consider um, versus if I were just investing only in my home country. And uh, that means that ShareSite becomes really powerful for me because it allows me to track capital gains or losses. It also allows me to track any currency fluctuations and any dividend income that uh, comes into the portfolio as well. So I can get a really good understanding of what my true returns actually are. It integrates with all of the brokers that I use so it automatically pulls through any trades that I might make. They appear in ShareSite site and the tracking is really accurate kind of as soon as I, I make those investments. And the second reason I use it is basically to make tax time very simple. Um, again, taxes can get very complicated, particularly if you have investments in a number of countries like myself. So to be able to go into ShareSite, extract a couple of reports, send them off to my accountant and really not have to worry too much more about it, uh, that's super beneficial for me. So if you're interested in checking out ShareSite, there is a free version that you can use forever if you have less than 10 holdings. But if you want to check out one of the uh, premium subscriptions, there will be a link down in the description below that will get you four months free off of an annual subscription, which is sharesite.com forward slash investing with Tom. So if you're interested, definitely check it out. Um, I don't partner with a lot of different uh, kind of companies to have sponsorships here on the channel, but uh, Sharesite is one of the ones that I'm really pleased to be partnering with. I've used the software personally for a long period of time and I think it's fantastic. So if you're interested, uh, definitely check that out. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so let's start talking commodities. Now, I am going to generalize a little bit uh, in this video just for educational purposes, and uh, there will be exceptions to some of the things that I'm about to say, but as a general kind of rule of thumb when it comes to investing in different commodity style industries, uh, I think a lot of these sort of rules apply. So, um, commodities in many ways are a 
big kind of contrast to Warren Buffett's great business or perfect business. If you think of how Buffett describes a great business, he says that a good business earns a high return on capital and a great business earns a high return on capital and grows. And uh, ideally there's a few things that kind of come alongside that. Typically in order to earn a high return on capital, um, it's really a lot easier if you are a capital light kind of business model, you don't have a lot of physical infrastructure maybe you're coca-cola or apple and you can charge significant premiums for your products based off your brand and in inflationary periods and, and so on you can increase prices alongside inflation or maybe even at a higher rate than inflation typically many of these great businesses also have high margins that's uh, not a blanket rule across all of them but businesses like apple and coca-cola and so on have high margins uh, and pretty consistently high margins as well and the consistency part is arguably more important than the actual uh, absolute margin percentage. Take Costco, for example, which has very low margins, but they are very, very consistent over time. And that's been a great kind of compounding investment over time as well. So let's take that general understanding of a great business and see how that fits this basket of commodities. And sure, commodities can vary depending on which one we're talking about, but in general, they have a lot of kind of the opposite of the principles we just talked about. Typically, they're pretty asset heavy. Uh, they have very volatile returns on capital because they're reliant on the price of one thing, of one commodity oftentimes. Uh, they generally require a lot of new capital to grow, to you know open a new plant, or um, get a new mine up and running, or whatever that might be. Uh, you have very predictable and unstable margins, and uh, you know there's a lot of commodity companies that have tended to go bankrupt over time because of all of these factors that I've just laid out. They have uh, maybe outlaid a lot of capital to start a new plant, maybe they've borrowed some money to do that, and then suddenly a commodity price goes through the floor and they were earning reasonable returns before, and now they're burning a lot of money very quickly. So uh, they're not always necessarily great long-term investments, but just like you can overpay for a great business, and turn a great business into a poor investment you can also sort of underpay for a low quality company uh, you know buy a cigar bar to buy a 50 cent dollar and have a pretty mediocre business turn into something that still generates really good returns so when it comes to what I would look for in a commodity company um, I have got a very very simple framework of um, basically simplifying it right down to you really only need two things and uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that these two things are very easy to find but I don't think the list is a whole lot longer in terms of the criteria that you need to tick off in order to uh, turn a you know lower quality commodity business into a fairly attractive maybe kind of medium term investment. I don't think you'll find a lot of commodity companies that you want to just coffee can and put in your portfolio for 20 years. But I think you can earn some pretty good returns, uh, you know, in a Monash Probri compound 26 type fashion where you're buying at 50 cents on the dollar, selling at 90 or 100 cents on the dollar and kind of moving on to the next thing. And those two things basically are if you find a really low PE company, which uh, basically a dime a dozen at the moment with commodities because earnings are very, very high, uh, so they look kind of cheap a lot of them on a price to earnings basis uh, the first thing you need to understand is what is going to happen with the E you know if something is trading at three times earnings or two times earnings or even one times earnings which there are some of these things starting to pop up you really need to understand are those earnings sustainable and they don't necessarily have to be completely sustainable if something's trading at a PE of two and it can maintain that rate of earnings for two years then you've kind of earned the market cap back and it kind of really doesn't matter a huge amount what happens in year three so that is the first thing we need to understand is what happens with the E and there are a couple of things that you can kind of do to understand the earnings moving forward in some cases you will find commodity businesses that are just purely exposed to whatever the spot market price is right now so you know when you go on your phone and look up the price of oil or the price of wheat or something that will be the actual amount that a lot of companies potentially are earning but in many cases there are commodity businesses that might have certain hedges in place so that uh, they kind of smooth out the ride in commodity pricing and that's something you really do need to understand. So if commodity prices do shoot up, is the company actually going to benefit from that commodity price 
or have they already got you know contracts to sell their commodity at a lower price and vice versa if a price has crashed through the floor have they again got these hedges in place to where they can still earn reasonable returns the second thing that we really need to understand is what is the capital allocation strategy from management now there are definitely different approaches to this and from a conservative investor perspective um, someone who is really focused on not losing money like myself the ideal thing that I would want in one of these low PE situations situations in a pretty mediocre kind of commodity business is I would want to get as much of their free cash flow and as much of their earnings paid back to me as fast as I possibly can. And I think that that point around capital allocation is arguably even more important than understanding in a lot of detail what the E in you know, earnings or, or PE is, is likely to be. Um, I've been involved in commodity investments in the past where you, know, you buy something at three times earnings. Uh, in one particular situation, which was a company called Graftech, we had uh, basically contracted earnings for the next kind of three to five years. We had a pretty clear understanding of how much money Graftech was going to make. And uh, they actually kind of did go through, they stumbled on a couple of things, but they earned you know, pretty close to the amount we actually thought they were going to earn. But the issue really was capital allocation. Now, uh, you know, when I first got into Graftech, which was actually a Monash Parai investment, uh, a lot of those earnings were being paid out immediately back to shareholders in the form of dividends and in the form of share buybacks. But when we got to the March 2020 kind of pandemic and the Graftech management got a little nervous, they really turned off the uh, dividend machine to a significant extent. And uh, instead, that capital was used to pay down debt. And if you're going to be a long-term shareholder in a company, that can be a pretty reasonable use of capital. If you're paying off debt at, say, a 5 to 7% uh, interest rate, that's effectively a 5 to 7% kind of guaranteed return that you're earning on that capital. But a business like Graftech wasn't intended to be a long-term hold for me. It was something where uh, I was going to earn my money back in three to five years because they were going to have earnings equivalent to the market cap over the next three to five years. And as a shareholder, I really wanted to get that cash out of the business, effectively take the money and run, and uh, whatever cash I could get for my shares kind of after that big capital return uh, is all sort of cream on top really. And again, this is going to be a bit of a general statement and there are exceptions to what I'm about to say here, but um, really one thing that I see a lot of commodity companies do, which just happens over and over and over again, is effectively any time that there are these big booms in commodity prices, one of the first things that a lot of these management teams want to do is they want to expand production <laughs> because anytime they uh, lay out some plans or you know model forward some financial projections for starting up a new plant or opening a new mine or making an acquisition, um, they will often look really, really attractive. <laughs> they'll be earning super high returns on capital because commodity prices are so high and they'll be making a lot of money. And the issue with that really, and again, this comes back to maybe like a frontline shipping, which was an old investment from Monash Pabrai, is that a lot of these businesses go through very short and very aggressive cycles. So uh, take frontline shipping, for example, where you know shipping rates went through the roof. Uh, a lot of these shipping companies then went out and put in new orders to buy new ships to expand capacity and try and make even more money. And if uh, shipping rates had remained high, that would have they would have been printing cash on these new ships. Now, the trouble is, that it takes you know two three years for these ships to actually turn up there is a lag time and by the time these ships turn up basically everyone else's new ships are turning up as well and there's this incredible oversupply of ships and rates go down and you kind of see that theme through almost every commodity type industry where you have these huge booms and busts uh, when there are busts no one wants to spend any money on new projects when there are booms everyone wants to spend all their money on new projects to expand capacity and uh, it's just really been a rough kind of bumpy ride in most cases. So there you have it. Those are my two cents on uh, commodity investing in general. I haven't made a commodity investment for a little while, but there are a few that are kind of on my radar right now, just with kind of the extremes that we're seeing at the moment. I think it is very easy to get burnt in a lot of these things. And there are definitely some aspects of commodities that are not that attractive as long-term investments. So you have to be careful and you do certainly have to know what you're doing to a large extent. But fortunately, the checklist of things you need to figure out when you're analyzing some of these companies, in my view, is pretty short. Firstly, you really have to understand uh, what the earnings are likely to be moving forward. 
in any business, of course, but particularly in one of these uh, low PE commodity companies where the PE is really just low because the commodity price and the earnings are, are so high right now, you really have to understand are the hedges in place? What are they likely to earn conservatively over the next couple of years? And secondly, and arguably even more important, you really need to know what the capital allocation strategy is. And if management hasn't laid out a clear capital allocation strategy, from my perspective, it's an easy pass to kind of move on to the next one and thinking as conservatively as possible that these are really just 50 cent dollar type investments uh, to a large extent I really just want that capital back in either um, massive dividend payments or in a big uh, share buyback or tender offer for some stock so um, that's kind of the way I view it it's not a perfect formula but I think some of those rules and general principles will work pretty well over time so if you did enjoy the video uh, please hit like and also subscribe if you're new here I really hope you enjoyed it if you're interested in the share side offer head to the link sharesite.com forward slash investing with Tom that will get you four months free off of an annual subscription but that's it for me for this one and I'll see you in the next video cheers